Welcome to the night sky, your monthly guide to the best objects and events that you can get out to see in amateur astronomy. Whether you're a casual fan of space or have years of experience in this hobby, there'll be something in this video for you to go out to see an image from your own backyard. Now let's begin the month of August by taking a look at the best meteor showers that are coming up over the next few weeks. August hosts one of the best meteor showers to go out to see, and it's my personal favorite to try to catch every single year, and it's the Perseid meteor shower. The Perseids can produce a rate of 50 to 75 meteors per hour under dark skies and come from the remnants of the comet Swift Tuttle. To see them, go outside around 11 p.m. on the night of August 12th and look towards the northeast. The later you stay up into the early morning of the 13th, the better the show will get as it rises higher and higher into the sky. Sadly for this year's show, the moon is going to get in the way with it nearly being full during the peak of the meteor shower. But I would still encourage you to try to go out to see some of the brighter meteors for what is one of the best shows that we have this year. The moon may get in the way of the Perseids this month, but that doesn't mean there aren't some great opportunities to go out and see it with a pair of binoculars and a telescope. Let's begin by taking a look at the phases of the moon, beginning with the first quarter phase on August 5th. The full moon for August rises as the sun sets on August 11th, with the last quarter moon on the 19th and the new moon on the 27th. The moon makes some close passes to the planets this month, meeting up with Jupiter on the 15th, Mars on the 19th, and Venus on the 25th. If you're able to get out and take any pictures of the moon or any other object in the nighttime sky, please tag me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy to share with me what you're able to get out an image. I'd love to see the pictures that you're taking this month of the nighttime sky. Let's begin the month of August by going out into the early morning sky to see how many planets we can see with the naked eye, spanning from the western to eastern horizon right before sunrise. You should be able to see Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, spanning from horizon to horizon. As for the specific planets and their best views, we'll begin with Mercury, which spends the month just above the horizon in the west. See if you can spot it with a pair of binoculars right after sunset before it swings back towards the sun come September. Venus continues to move closer to the horizon in the morning sky as it continues its month-long journey back to being a sunset target later this year. Mars pops above the horizon around 12.30 a.m., with the best views being later in the morning starting around 3.30 a.m. as it continues towards its close approach to the Earth later this December. Jupiter will be at a good height above the horizon around 12.30 a.m., with views improving as it moves higher and higher each hour. Uranus is best observed after 2.30 a.m., and good views of Neptune can be found around 12.30 a.m. The main event in terms of planets this month is the gorgeous ringed planet Saturn. Saturn and Earth come into opposition with each other around August 14th, pretty much meaning that the orbit of the Earth gets in between the Sun and Saturn. That has the Sun setting in the west right when Saturn is rising in the east, giving us gorgeous views of this planet throughout most of the entire night. If the clouds finally clear and the weather gets better, I hope to get out to image and view Saturn around 11 p.m. later this month. I've got a new series out called The Joy of Astrophotography, and I'm hoping to make an episode specifically about Saturn in the coming weeks. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below to the first episode of that series if you're interested in checking it out. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Now, in terms of comets for the month of August, we're going to be looking again at K2 pan stars. To find it this month, go out right when things start to get dark about an hour and a half after sunset to look for comet pan stars with a telescope. 
Depending on your light pollution, you'll probably need something five inches or larger in aperture to make out any of the faint fuzzy details of this comet as it travels through the constellation Scorpius this August. As we move beyond our solar system, it's important to note that the deep sky objects we're going to be looking at tonight are more difficult to find than objects that we've talked about previously in this video. And you're going to need darker skies, a larger telescope, and in some cases, astrophotography equipment to pick them up. For the month of August, let's begin by looking up until we come across a beautiful deep sky object that I've actually never seen with the naked eye, but I have imaged with my deep sky astrophotography equipment, and it's the North America Nebula. I've never been able to view this object visually, but shooting it with a CLS light pollution filter using my Samyang 135mm lens brings out the beautiful faint details of this emission nebula that covers a part of the sky larger than four full moons. Frame it right to catch the Pelican Nebula as well when you are trying to image this beautiful target. Staying in Cygnus, let's move over to the Veil Nebula. The Veil Nebula reveals the ghostly remnants of a star that went supernova, and it is a sight to see, particularly with larger telescopes and darker skies. Try using a light pollution filter when observing this one, and I found good success with an O3 filter on this specific target. It really helps it to pop out of the background of space, adding some much needed contrast under my light polluted sky. Let's go from two fairly dim targets visually to a great target for binoculars or a small telescope, the Dumbbell Nebula. This oval nebula was the first planetary nebula ever discovered and is a favorite of mine to view during the summer months. Another fun binocular target is a cluster of stars aptly named the Coat Hanger because, well, it kind of looks like a coat hanger. I've got a list of some more incredible deep sky objects that you can go out to see in the summer sky, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. Those are just some of the best objects that you can get out to see and image for the month of August. If there's anything I left off of this list, or any experience that you've had out imaging or observing the incredible objects in our universe, please let us know about that in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.